We're on the banks of the Suwannee River in North Florida, and uh, right behind me is the Withlacoochee River, which is a major tributary of the Suwannee River. I'm out here today with Paddle Florida, which is a group that is bringing people both out of the cities and out of the country Permission to launch. To enjoy these rivers by paddle sports, mostly kayaking, canoes, and paddle boards. Yay! I made it! This river is very beautiful, it's dynamic. When you paddle along the Suwannee River, there's springs coming in from the side, there's wildlife. We saw swallowtail kites. I saw an alligator breach four or five feet out of the water. I assume it's going for a fish. Never know what's going to be there to surprise you. Some of the spring houses along the Swanee are pretty fascinating. That was really our first tourist attractions in Florida, the big mineral springs. People thought they had healing qualities, kind of medical tourism. There's over 300 artesian springs along the Swanee River. This is called the Springs Heartland because it truly is. It's the highest concentration of springs in the state. I've seen the change over the last 20 years. The spring's darker most of the time, the native vegetation has died out, the algae has increased, and that's directly associated with the nitrogen pollution. And the springs are the conduit for that nitrogen coming into the river. For years, we've seen negative impacts in the Suwannee watershed. It's been contaminated with nitrogen and other pollutants because of past determinations that parts of it aren't worthy of protection under the Clean Water Act. Right now, the Suwannee River is putting out about 700 tons per year of nitrate as nitrogen at its mouth into the Gulf of Mexico. The Gulf Coast estuary is having increasing problems with the red tide, which is an algal-dominated problem that kills manatees and fish. Springs make rivers, rivers make estuaries. One of the largest tributaries to the Suwannee comes in from Georgia. They've had repeated discharges of raw wastewater with lots of bacteria. Pollution doesn't stop at the state boundary. It keeps going, it keeps flowing south. It affects the river, it affects the fish, it affects the springs, it affects the Gulf of Mexico. There are different laws in each state that affect the rivers. Because of the differences in regulations, you really need more of a federal agency managing the resources to be consistent. After lawsuits by polluters, the Bush administration weakened protections for small streams and wetlands. The Obama administration's new clean water rule tries to fix those problems. It makes it clear once again that small streams and wetlands that are connected to larger bodies of water are protected under the Clean Water Act. There's a growing constituency for these rivers that do not want to see them change. It's a public trust that the waters will be taken care of and protected for the common good. Everything associated with this river ties in with the local economies. A lot of times people don't realize the economic impact of somebody coming here for a week. And multiply that by several thousand, and you have a lot of dependence on clean water for this river. The new clean water rule will protect the Suwannee and similar water bodies across the United States. Clean water is the lifeblood of our communities, our economy, and our natural environment.